Okay, here we go. We're at Super 73 and we're talking with? Wyatt. Nice. Wyatt, How's can you going, tell us? Guys? Good, good. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the RX? Yes. So this is slightly different than your S2 that you have right now. Okay. So the big differences are going to be um, the brakes, the suspension package, and the, obviously the overall size of the bike. Okay. Um, so this bike is slightly bigger. So it is a 32 inch seat height versus the 31 inch on the S2. Nice. Um, it also is slightly longer. I think it's about three to four. Oh, I didn't even realize that. As well. Okay. Um, basically this bike has a four piston set of brakes and you can see that it does have different brake levers on the bike. Um, a little bit more fancy of a brake lever, which nice. is pretty cool. I find it to be a little bit more comfortable to use. Okay. Um, basically a four piston brake is going to get you a lot more stopping power because there's going to be more piston pushing the brake pad into the brake rotor. Um, also this one has as you can see a different set of handlebars which yes. i didn't go over before is that a more is that like a low rise or um no so these are just a different style so the s2 has a more of a square handlebar set that comes straight out okay where this one actually curves in more of a performance handlebar got um, it more of a dirt bike style handlebar i guess okay um which does feel like you do have slightly more control over the bike because of how the shape is. Would that mean you're not leaning as forward as, as much when you're riding or? Um, I think you're not leaning forward as much on this one a lot because it is taller okay. as well as a little bit longer. So you do feel like you can sit a little bit more relaxed okay. on it. Uh, where the S2, because it is a little shorter, you do feel a little bit more hunched over. And this um, is the Rhino Gray? This is, yes, the Rhino Gray. Okay. Um, so I don't know if I have a car mounted red one out. There. And it actually comes with the horn too, right? Yes, sir. And it is nice. very loud. I would do it for you, but I don't no, know no. if we can catch We're good. on video. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously the suspension is very nice on this one. So it actually is fully tunable. Um, so you can adjust the preload and rebound in the front. Okay. Uh, using these, um, what does the rebound do? So basically the rebound is how far um or how quickly basically it bounces back okay when it goes down um and then the preload is basically how low it, are, it starts from the uh from the start so, right um basically a faster rebound is going to get you a little bit um it's going to feel a little bit softer okay so it's bad, bouncing back quicker and then the slower rebound is going to feel a little bit stiffer um in comparison nice um on the rear you can adjust the rate the rebound and the compression um, on this piggyback reservoir right here. So basically what the, piggy, what the piggyback reservoir does, um, there is a fluid that runs through that coil and the rear suspension. Um, so basically having the piggyback reservoir helps to keep that fluid cooler okay. uh, for a longer period of time. So when you're riding on like a long distance trail or doing any like long distance commuting, um, it should help to keep that fluid cooler and help per it uh, perform for a longer period of time. Okay. I love how they cut out the 73 on this, just like the other one. This, is, this isn't as dramatic, but it's right. still pretty cool. So starting from the top, the mirrors. I love them. I know they're an accessory, but I just got to go there. Love the mirrors. Gives the bike a whole different look. And it's a look that I dig. The grips. Um, the grips are cool. Uh, they're better than the Super that I had. I do wish they came up with a cruise control for the throttle, though twist it and then like maybe slide a button over to where it just kind of chills at 20 miles an hour or something for a while but I can see where that would lead to a lot of lawsuits where it got stuck someone couldn't undo it and they crashed and died so forget about that just seemed like a cool idea at the time this is where I mount my tripod and film most of my bike footage it's actually a pretty nice and stable place to mount the headlight i haven't used it a whole lot i've done a couple of night rides um it's a pretty poor headlight but it is a stock headlight they do have an upgrade available of course but it only lights up like a i don't know maybe two foot in front and like a two by two inch square so it's kind of ridiculous um i haven't got the basket yet because it's not in stock the one that i want is the large one and uh i plan on mounting that and then having the large pet carrier here for my Boston Terrier. So when that's available, probably weeks and weeks, who knows now with China, um, I'll get one of those and then I'll be making some cool videos with the dog. But for now, nothing. The brakes. The brakes on this bike are amazing. Compared to my Super 73, they never squeak. They stop on a dime and um, I have nothing but great things to say about these brakes. 
Now the console is an add-on. Let's talk about the console. If you're gonna put something in here, um, if it's heavy or has any sort of weight to it, like a lock, every time you go over a bump, you're gonna hear it rattle around in there. So maybe put something in there to dampen it if you have something heavy in there. Otherwise, there's a lot of storage in there. It's a pretty great place to keep everything. And the drink holder, nice size drink holder. I do wish it was a little bit bigger um, or maybe expandable to have larger size drinks in there. And this, we're gonna call this the phone holder. Um, it needs to be about an inch wider because everybody that I know has larger phones than this. So I just, I just put my tool in here for my mirrors, my little Allen key in there, and put the little strap there to hold it in place. Plus this is a sticky pad. I don't wanna put my Allen key in here because it'll just flop around, make a bunch of noise. I just keep it right here so it's always available for me to loosen or tighten up my mirrors. If I have to put the bike in the truck, I usually put the mirrors down, throw the bike in the back seat, and then when I bring it out, just tighten the mirrors again with this bad boy. I just keep it there in public, you know, if someone's gonna steal it, whatever, if those things are free, it doesn't really matter. The seat, the passenger kit, which I already went over in another video, is, is amazing. I love the passenger kit. It comes with this seat, it comes with these foot pegs, and it also comes with some plexiglass guards for the uh, spokes if you're if you're riding with a passenger. This seat, if you do use the riser by itself, the stock one that it comes with, not very comfortable at all. So I don't recommend that. But with the passenger kit, it gives it a nice smooth line, makes it look more like a moped, and um, it's way more comfortable. The pedals, the crank, everything down there, um, it's, it's, it's pretty well made and pretty well designed for this bike. It's easy to pedal, even for a bigger guy like myself. I have no complaints with the, uh, the pedaling aspect. The kickstand, I didn't like it at first, but now I'm, I'm kind of digging it because it's kind of like an old school moped. It's pretty unique. The fenders were an upgrade, but they're kind of cool. They kind of bring the whole bike together. And if you, know, you go over water and stuff, you're gonna you're gonna need some fenders, otherwise you're gonna have water or mud up your backside. The battery, I've had no complaints about the battery. Uh, the first three charges were full 12 hour charges and they recommend that you do that so that it evens out the cells. Um, I usually charge this bike more often than I have to. I've never run out of a charge yet, which is cool because nobody wants to be stranded with a zero battery. So all in all, I recommend this bike, it's a great model. I'd love to be able to go a little bit faster when I want to, maybe 25, 30 miles an hour, but that's not what this bike is all about. It's not a speedster. It's more of a utility bike, and I've used it as such. I've used it to get groceries. I've used it to carry some larger items, but like I said, I have to wait till I get that front rack to haul more things and have more fun in that regard. So Red Runner gets two thumbs up from me. There's one, there's the other. So you can't really compare the Aerial Grizzly to any of the Rad Power Bikes. And I'm not trashing Rad Power Bikes. Um, I had the Rad Runner for quite a few months and I loved it. It's just a different kind of bike. It's a utility bike for cruising, getting groceries, things like that. Whereas this Aerial Rider Grizzly version 2 is for hauling ass and having fun. The Grizzly is much faster than the Rad. It's got premium shocks as part of the dual suspension package. It's got dual 1000 watt hub motors. And in my opinion, the brakes are far superior. The stock seats aren't very comfortable on either brand. You have to upgrade if you want to be comfortable while you're riding any type of distance. And of course, with the dual batteries, the range is going to be far superior with the Aerial Rider Grizzly. If you have any questions about the Grizzly or any of the Rad Runners, leave comments down below and I'll answer whatever questions I can. If you're in the market for an Aerial Rider or a Rad Power Bike, check out my description for money-saving links. This bike is just stupid fast. I know I keep saying it, but damn. Going from a Rad Runner to this, this is ridiculous. 
It's like a stunt bike. You can get places in half the time now. This bike is no joke. It's a beast. If you're commuting and looking for an e-bike and you can afford one of these bad boys, I highly recommend it.